Hey guys, so uh, long time no see for some of you, but I'm back with another haul. So you might notice, first of all, that I am in a new location. So I was on a buying ban for a long time. I've kind of talked about it on the channel. Um, and that part of that was because I moved and I knew house. So this is my basement. And as you can tell by the lack of organization and the shelves behind me, it's still not put together. So hopefully, I was kind of hoping that by this time I could like haul or do a new tour of my comic book room. So basically I have a whole lower floor that's just for me and the comic books. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Okay, so there you, you might notice a sort of trend in this haul. That trend is Star Wars. So I recently, in the winter break, kind of got into Star Wars, surprisingly. I was watching Mandalorian Season 2. Um, and I, I've talked before about how I love Mandalorian. And, you know, there's a lot of tie-ins to other previous, you know, cartoons, anything else. And so I was like, okay, I don't want to be surprised, you know, or I want to be able to understand what's going on. So I should watch the other things. Right. And so then I finally finished watching the original three movies. I'm sorry. I had never seen all of them. And then I went and watched uh, Clone Wars and Rebels. And then I realized that I, it's finally happened. I'm a Star Wars fan. So I hyperfixated, as I'm known to do as an ADHD person. And so I, there's a lot of that in here. So that's just a heads up. Anyways, let's get to the haul. So started off, I got a great Christmas present from Kristen, who is the co-host of mine on my Sunday show, Fangirls Assemble, which is on the Omnibus Collectors Network. This is They by um, Sarah D. Elfgren and art by Carl Johnson. This is volume one. It's a beautiful hardcover. This is published by Insight Comics, and I actually don't know much about it. Uh, I know that Vikings are involved, and this girl is really cool looking. And so I haven't dug into this yet, but I think, you know, Kristen definitely hit it on the nose as a present for me that this would be something that I like. I love Vikings, and I love comics about really cool girls, like, going on adventures, right? Um, so we will see how that is. And second gift from Kristen is Ever by Terry Moore. And this is the like special edition cover. So this came out while I was on my buying ban. And usually I buy all the Terry Moore stuff all the time. But at this point, it's like, no, I'm on a buying ban. We're buying a house. I'm not going to touch it. And she ended up getting it because it came also with this cool print. And she didn't like it. <laughs> she didn't like Ever by Terry Moore. And actually, I don't even know what it's about. I know it's short. And it has divided a few fans because a few fans are like, oh, I love Terry Moore, but Ever's the first one I kind of felt lukewarm on. And so Kristen was like, hey, you know, I feel bad to give you a gift that I even don't even really enjoy, but you'll probably like it. And you're such a huge Terry Moore fan that I feel like it's better for you. So I haven't read this yet, but uh, hopefully soon and hopefully I like it. I'll feel really sad if I, you know, finally read a Terry Moore book that I don't like. Uh, next is... Clover. This is a manga by Clamp. Um, it's it's a writer creator team. They've written Chobits, Magic Knight, Ray Earth, um, Card Capter Sakura. This is published by Kodansha, and this is a like deluxe. This is the collector's edition, so it's a nice big, chunky hardcover, and the art is beautiful. What I'm really glad about is that sometimes these deluxes, ooh, that's a that's a loud spine have very shiny, um, uh, that like shiny pages. And I prefer my manga to feel more matte, more newspapery, if that makes any sense. And this does do that. And it's beautiful. Like I think this, you know, I love clamp art. So I love being able to see it oversized like this. And it's also just a beautiful um, edition of this. Now, I wasn't a fan of the story. I don't regret owning this just because I think it's a really beautiful collected edition, a collected edition. but you know, it happens and I'm so glad I have it. Um, so a couple more manga things. I did treat myself a little bit. 
in person. I didn't even order this online. I went to the store with my mask on and treated myself to a book. Luckily, no one was there. Um, one is Kageki Shoujo. This is a manga that I've been wanting to read forever. It's a one and done, really thick boy. Uh, this is published by Seven Seas. It is written, story and art are by Kimiko Saiki. And this is about these two girls that want to do Takarazuka theater. So for those of you who don't know what Takarazuka is, that is an all-female theater troupe in Japan. It's really cool. They've done renditions of so many different things. Like, I know they've done Sailor Moon. Um, but it was, it's all women. And so they're both going into this. It's an all-girls theater school. And it looked really good. And so I wanted it. And I treated myself. And I think last manga of this run, of this haul, Oh Maidens in Your Savage Season. This is really hard for me to say out loud. Uh, this is published by Kodansha. Um, story is by Mari Okara and art by Nao Emoto. Um, this is about like a literature club at a high school. And, you know, they <laughs> they talk about different literature. They talk about like spicy literature. Like, oh my God, this has sex in it. Like this, oh, what are we going to do? And there's also like crushes in the group as well and outside of the group. So you have your usual like, manga, um, shoujo, um, shenanigans, if it said like high school. But like one thing that made me want to read this is that I think there's a girl in here that has a crush on one of the other girl members. Um, and that's not, not the main focus. It is part of the story. It focuses on like a group of four to five girls in this club. And I'll try to show you a little bit of the art. But um, I really thought this was super cute. And it's a nice, like, it's just a nice feeling trade. Um, I really appreciate the quality of manga nowadays. Nowadays. Um, <laughs> when I was younger, it's just, you know, they're really pretty now. I think they're really well collected. I'm, I'm really, I'm enjoying getting back into manga as far as buying manga. Because I read it online, but I wouldn't buy it. <laughs> the exception being this stuff behind me. So, um... You know, I made the mistake of not organizing my Star Wars stuff ahead of time, so it'd be all in one go. So it's going to be splintered in here. Um, so I bought novels. I know. Who is she? Um, the first one I bought was Star Wars A New Dawn by John Jackson Miller. Um, so this is a prequel to Star Wars Rebels. It's all about, like, the relationship between Kanan and Hera, who are two of the main characters in Rebels. And they're, like, I mean, they're a couple. So I was really interested, of course, in seeing how that developed because I really like the both of them. And I'm pretty sure Hera is my favorite Twi'lek. That's her like species. Um, so I haven't picked up, I haven't read it yet. But next thing I did read, which is Star Wars Leia, Princess of Alderaan. So the original story is by Claudia Gray, but then they adapted this into a manga. This is published by Disney and Lucasfilms and Yen Press. Um, the art and adaptation is by Haruichi. And so this is an adaptation of Claudia Gray's novel by the same name. So this is Princess Leia before A New Hope. Um, she's a teenager. She's trying to prove herself as the future queen of Alderaan. Um, so she has to undergo some different trials. And she's fun. She's like, you know, I, I still don't care a ton for the original movies. But it's the, it's the supporting stuff that I really, really enjoy. She is so cute and so young and so fun. And, you know, I think manga does this so well because you really get to enjoy her, her youth and expressions. You know, she's just like a regular teenage girl. Um, she's just kind of goofy and, and still very like focused. Um, I love the art. I love this cover. I like, I thought this was so cute. I really, really enjoyed this and it made me love Leia. And I, I already liked Leia, but I love Leia because of this. And so I hope that there's more volumes of this uh, coming out. Um, I know there's some other like Star Wars manga. And so I might pick that up. All right, so I did finally um, get courageous enough to go outside and go to a bookstore because finally everyone in my state, like not everyone, not every place, but bookstores, everyone's wearing their mask appropriately over their nose. If you're watching this, you don't cover your nose with your mask, please do. So I went to Half Price Books and I really treated myself. I was like, look, shopping, it's like a real life. It's still weird, right? But I got Warlords of Appalachia and this is by, here we go. My sticker's covering it. 
um, Philip Kennedy Johnson with art by Jonas Scharf. So a couple things really interested me in this. I still haven't read it. So this is written by someone who went to college here in Kentucky. And it's actually centered, the story is centered around Kentucky. So um, there is, this might hit a little too on the nose. You know, people are always like, I don't like politics in my comics. And I'm like, politics are in all comics, but okay. But this one's like actually has politics in it. Um, so after a, a controversial election of an enigmatic dictator, the United States was plunged into second civil war. This sounds like something I've heard before. Um, but um, Kentucky is the only state that refuses to acknowledge the fascist state's sovereignty. So already that's, that's the setting for this book. And as someone who's from Kentucky, lives in Kentucky, I love this idea. I think that sounds so much fun. So this was an instant buy for me because I'm always looking for more books in, set in Appalachia. Um, and I don't think a lot of people do it well. I know Cullen Bunn writes Southern people and Southern dialogue so, so, so well. Um, so I'm hoping that's what I find in this. And this is published by Boom Comics, by the way, which also is surprising. It seems like more of an image title or like, uh, nope, forgot the other one. But it sounds like more of an image title or like Dark Horse, maybe. I also picked up Space Dumplings. Now this is a Scholastics graphic novel. This is by Craig Thompson. Um, I picked this up on cuteness factor alone. And the fact, that it's a nice, thick hardcover. This is obviously for a younger audience. Um, but already I opened it up when I was in the store and I love how fun and cartoonish it is. Um, it, I already fell in love with like the lettering and the colors. I don't need to know what it's about even. I know that there's like some sort of family and there's space and there's a little kid and obviously some adventures. And sometimes that's all you need to read. I always tell people don't shy away from graphic novels that are meant for younger audiences because just because it's directed towards younger audiences doesn't mean it's not accessible or fun to all ages. And there's been some like wonderful little just diamonds in the rough, I guess, um, in younger graphic novels that have been so much fun and still have so much talent in there. So please, you know, broaden your horizons if you don't, if you haven't dipped into those. So another, this is, these are all blind buys, really. Another blind buy is From Under Mountains by um, Claire Gibson, um, Art and Colors by Sloane Leong, and Covers and Stories by Marion Churchland. Um, so another another one, I don't know what this is about. I, I just picked on cover alone, really, because I really like the look of her. And I'm always looking for, you know, new graphic novels that have maybe a protagonist that I don't get to see often, especially if it's like a fantasy setting, which is what this is. Um, I looked in the back enough to see something that said like Lady Elena and Goblin Race. And I was like, okay, this sounds pretty cool. Um, so being able to see like a fancy store with a non-traditional heroine, I'm in. Friends with Boys by Faith Erin Hicks. This is a first second book. Um, so Faith Erin Hicks, she's also written, oh man, I should have this book near me. But I don't. Anyways, <laughs> I read a few other Faith Aaron Hicks books from First Second. For some reason, I can't remember the name right now of any of them, which sounds bad. But you know what? I have a, I have a really bad memory. Um, so she, I really enjoyed this book. It's just, you know, typical, like, a uh, young teen who feels a little isolated, has a bunch of brothers, doesn't really have a lot of friends. And the biggest part of this book is that she keeps seeing this ghost everywhere. And I'm not, I'm not talking about like a recently deceased ghost, but like deceased from like hundreds of years ago. Like the town has like rumors about her, not seeing her, but rumors about her death. And so she keeps seeing this ghost, but she's also trying to make friends right now because she, you know, her, her mother's left her. Um, her brothers are just their, their older brothers. They want to be separate from her. They don't feel like she's cool enough, right? Um, so she's just trying to make her own way in the world. And it's fun. And it has a cool twist, I think, at the end. Um, you know, anyone who felt awkward growing up, I think you'll, I think you'll like um, Friends with Boys. Sponsor time. 
This episode is sponsored by CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off the cover price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on packaging your book so they arrive safely and in excellent condition, as well as prompt and helpful service. And check out their bargain bin for even greater deals up to 90% off the cover price. Cheap Graphic Novels is currently running a special promotion for our viewers. If you're a first time customer, let them know you were referred by us near Mint Condition at checkout and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order. Cheap Graphic Novels is your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discounts, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. Um, I also got this copy of In Real Life by Corey Doctorow and Jen Wong. Um, Jen Wong is another one of my favorites. Um, I'm not sure. This is another first second, which I'll pick up anything for a second. <laughs> um, and this one, I was also really surprised about. So as you may be able to guess from the title or in, in real life, it's about this young girl who ends up joining this MMO for the first time and being a part of that. And it, I, I'm not going to give it away, but it definitely goes in a direction that you would not expect. You know, I thought it would be the normal harrowing tales of, you know, going into an MMO and kind of like getting addicted and losing your way or, you know, female empowerment in the MMO realm or whatever. But it, it was very interesting. And so I don't want to give it away, but I recommend it as like a blind buy. Um, as a gamer girl myself, um... I really could relate to this story. I really enjoyed it. Um, I also picked up Everything is Beautiful and I Am Not Afraid. This is published by Andrew McNeil Publishing. Um, it's by Yao Xiao. It's a Baopu, uh, Baopu collection. Um, so <laughs> this was about this um, Chinese-born illustrator living in the United States. And it's all about like, it's a memoir about kind of her qu queer journey, but it, it's um it's interesting it's very disjointed it's not really narratively focused it's very unique is what i'll say i don't know if it was for me because i i left it thinking I, I left it not knowing whether i really liked it or not um but it was interesting it's different so um the rest of these are books i promise but i got a little zeb pop figure from star wars rebels for like five dollars i got lucky um, <laughs> because this is, I, again, my Star Wars Rebels obsession. So he's the first, I hope, of many Star Wars pop figures, but they are all a little expensive now online. So if you happen to, like, have the rest of them or, like, know where I can get them from a good deal, I mean, I would appreciate it. So this is the first of three different High Republic books you'll see me hold up here. And I do want to do a video about them, but I think I'm going to wait until a couple more books come out and the comic comes out more. So Star Wars is starting a new thing this year called Star Wars The High Republic. So this is, this predates the movies. Um, it's after the old Republic, I guess. And this is like the golden age of Jedi. So there are an abundance of Jedi. They are this like huge peacekeeping force. It's the golden age. You don't have to deal with the Sith. Everything's peaceful. Or is it? Ooh. So um, there are about like, there's three books out right now. And the comic has started. And there's several books coming out um, in the future with all sorts of cool artists and writers. So this is the young adult one. Um, I just bought all of the books so I could know what's going on. Um, and this is by Justina Ireland. It's called Test of Courage. I just started digging into this, so I don't know a whole lot about it. Just that you should read it after a light, the, the Light of the Jedi, which is the um, Charles Soule novel, which I'll show you in a second. Okay, um, more Star Wars. I picked up Ahsoka by E.K. Johnson. Again, this is a novel and not a comic book, but um, I want to know everything that's going on. They should get Ahsoka in the comic book soon. I'm surprised that she's not... Uh, next, so this is gonna feel silly, but this is the picture book. So the first two books that came out were a novel, uh, like a more adult novel, a young adult novel, and this children's story picture book. And I feel silly for buying this. It was like $5, but the reason I did was so I would know what everyone looked like. Cause I was reading, I read the novel first, which is the recommended order. And, and this spoils the novel, by the way, <laughs> like totally spoils it. 
Um, but I wanted to know what all the characters looked like. So it's hard for me to imagine them and I don't know all the Star Wars lingo. So I, I bought it purely for that. And it comes with stickers of the characters of the new Jedi in the front um, and in the back, including my new favorite, uh, Avar Chris, who's this like super strong, awesome, cool female Jedi. Um, I also got the Star Wars Adventures Omnibus. I found this at a local comic book store. So this is published by IDW. And the difference you'll see, and maybe a lot of you already know, is that the majority of Star Wars books are published by Marvel. So you're Darth Vader and Dr. Aphra and Jason Aaron's Star Wars. Um, those are all through Marvel. However, I, IDW has the rights to put together comics that are geared more towards younger audiences that are really just fun. And, which I didn't know when I picked this up, I was like, oh, this is neat. And it says Omnibus, okay, <laughs> right, I'll buy it. And so this is a, like a collection of several short stories involving all of the, you know, characters that we know and love throughout the Star Wars universe. And what's really fun about this is that we also get some crossovers between characters that we wouldn't normally see. So like, we get a crossover between Rebels with Hera and Leia, or, you know, like, just um, different characters that maybe you wouldn't expect. And, you know, the art, the art changes throughout. There's a lot of just great cartoony artists. I think I've really enjoyed it so far. I don't think you have to be a kid to enjoy this. But I do think that if you have a younger person in your life and you want to get them in Star Wars, this is a fun thing to experience with them. Um, super worth it. And this is only like, like 30 bucks for this. It's a nice... It's a nice trait. Okay, this behemoth. So I doubled it. <laughs> um, so this is the library edition of Critical Role Vox Machina Origins. So this collects volumes one and two. Um, and for those of you who are unaware of this, this is a dark horse, by the way. Um, so this is a comic book that is a prequel to the Critical Role podcast. So this details what their characters went through um, prior to their show starting. Um, and honestly, I think this is something that even a person who didn't listen to the podcast would like. If you like fantasy stories, they do very, very well with this. I'm so impressed because it's not an easy feat to put together a DD and d podcast as a comic book. And it's so good and the art's great. And this was worth double dipping. It's beautiful. I would hold that open for you, but it's it's a hefty boy. I bought like two floppies <laughs> in the winter. Um, one is starting off my future state journey with Wonder Woman future state. And this is with Yara Flor, who is the South American, like Brazilian Wonder Woman. And already, oh, this is by Joelle Jones. Beautiful, I hope. I know that like Future State is them kind of just trying stuff out, taking a little like breath of fresh air from the main continuity. But I mean, look at this babe. I just really hope that we have Yara Flora forever. I mean, we're getting a show by CW, but I want more already. Um, and if you're catching this later, um, Omar and I are going to do a review of all of Future State once it's done. So after the end of March. I also picked up this one-off, uh, Gloomhaven Fallen Lion. So this is a comic um, <laughs> in, that includes lore and story from the board game Gloomhaven, which has been immensely, immensely popular. Um, and I'm a huge, huge fan. I play a lot of Gloomhaven and I play a ton of Gloomhaven online on Steam. So I've been hoping that they do some more lore expanding with that. Okay, last three. Um, uh, Star Wars High Republic Light of the Jedi by Charles Soule. So I was really excited about this. This is like the novel that kicks off the High Republic. It's really, really cool. It sets off, it, 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 go, it, it goes ahead and shows you the new Jedi. Um, new, as in, well, they're old. This is before the movies. And um, their enemy in this, which is not the Sith. And so you were introduced to all these really cool Jedi. So not just like one or two Jedi being like hunted. It's just so many Jedi and it's so neat because you really get a chance to explore how different Jedi use the force, what that means to them, their tactics, 
you know, and so on and so on. And you have Avar Chris, who's a total babe. And Lodum Greatstorm, also a total babe. So good. I really recommend it. I don't want to say anything more about it because spoilers, but definitely check it out. And we're not done with Star Wars. This is the last thing though. I promise. And this is the Star Wars Kanan Omnibus. Um, this is, who writes this? Weissman and Lair, um, you know what? I'm sorry. I won't be able to pronounce anyone's names. Anyways, so this, um, this is a book that predates uh, Star Wars Rebels. So it's a prequel all about Kanan. And this is, Kanan was like one of the last Padawans after like a whole bunch of the Jedi, you know? Uh, and he's also one of the main characters of Star Wars Rebels. So this is all about him as a kid um, before everything happened, him and his master detailing all that situation. So here's Kanan as an adult. Here's little baby Kanan with his little rat tail, little Jedi Padawan rat tail. Um, digging into this soon too, and this collects uh, Kanan 1 through 12. So that's, that's a pretty nice one. I say omnibus, I guess it's not an omnibus, it's just a hardcover. Um, but you know. All right, and last but not least, if I can get it up here, okay. Wonder Woman Dead Earth by Daniel Warren Johnson with colors by Mike Spicer. Oh my gosh, this is my first like hardcover DC black label. This is amazing. It's incredible. It's so good. The art is so edgy and raw. Like, and I, I don't mean edgy like Titans DC show edgy, but just like, it's just a very, it's just raw art. Like it's, it's not perfect. The lines aren't perfect. It feels very, you know, I don't have a good word for it. Anyways, it'll speak for itself, promise. The colors are beautiful. The story is really interesting because on one hand, it's Wonder Woman meets Mad Max. Because you have this whole post-apocalyptic, the world is kind of dead scenario. And Wonder Woman is the only superhero alive. And she's picking together the pieces of like, what happened? What led Earth to this? And on the other hand, you are dealing with a lot of just complicated feelings between Wonder Woman and the humans there, um, which I won't go into, but it's definitely has a lot of levels you wouldn't expect. Because it goes from like one moment, you know, Wonder Woman running this like car into a Hydra's mouth to another moment, just this like really meaningful conversations. Um, yeah, and so that's, that's my haul. Uh, thank you guys for watching. And I know it's been a while, so hopefully I can put these books together soon. <laughs> Don't look at my shelves. They're all out of order. I am so ashamed. They're, it's just there as placeholders. Um, and yeah, so I look forward to hopefully seeing you all again soon um, and more regularly. And I hope you guys are all staying safe and that you come hang out with me on Tuesdays on Old Reader, New Reader. And of course, um, final spiel, right? Comment down below with any interesting haul that you've gotten this winter. Or like based on my haul that you've seen, uh, send me some recommendations if I should check out. Or if you read any of these books I said I haven't read yet, let me know if they're good. <laughs> or warn me if I shouldn't pick them up, or I shouldn't read them. Um, and don't forget to like this video, subscribe if you're interested in watching more comic book videos here on Near Mint Condition. We also have a Patreon through which you can vote for reading orders or, you know, which book we should read for all your new reader each month. Or for one-on-one -on -one with Omar to talk about your collection, how to, you know help it out or whatever. And we also have a red bubble so you can buy a uh, near mint condition merch, show your support in real life. And we do have a PO box at, um, through which you can send us stuff, gifts, fan art, I don't know, interesting stories, whatever. Um, and you can find the information down below in the description. And I hope that we see you all soon. Stay safe. Well, I wanted to show you guys my biggest haul but she won't come over here. Yuna, come here, say hi. Hello. This is my dog. Well, I tried. There she is, there's my haul. The best haul of the winter. Yuna.